how you can make $300 a day selling on Amazon using the arbitrage business model. That's what this video is going to be about today. And if you watched uh, Friday's video, that was what the scheduled uploaded video was. We're actually live right now. What we wanted to do was extend that video, talk a little bit about it live and bring about a format where we could address your questions, whether we're talking about getting you to your financial weekly, monthly, yearly goals, or if there's anything else that you want to address, we're going to get started. This is what to sell on Amazon. I'm Horace. Let's go. And what we're going to do today, we're going to do something different, guys. Number one, we haven't been live since, oh, right around the time where this channel went over a thousand subscribers and now we're approaching uh, progressively we're getting towards the 4,000 subscriber mark I think we're at about 3,500 somewhere in that area so rather than you listen to me yak all the time what we decided to do was bring in some panelists so that you get some different perspectives and uh, we're gonna start bringing those wonderful people in right now <laughs> we have um <laughs> we got some of my favorite people and i enlisted them from our private session you know what they say the cream rises to the top so we got our wonderful friend michael we call him mikey We've got the lovely Miss Sarah, the beautiful Karen, and Nate and Elizabeth. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to get going here. We're going to talk just a little bit about Friday's video, give some pointers, get some perspectives, and then we'll do some Q&A. So if you watched... Um, Friday's video. Bear in mind, this channel focuses on newbies and a lot of times what you need to do as a newbie, you need to get your momentum going. You got to get going. Don't focus so much on huge numbers. You're going to hear us talking about numbers in the tens of thousands that we do on a monthly basis. You're not there yet. And that's okay because we didn't start out that way. We got to get you some momentum. Yes, the video talked about gross numbers. That wasn't $300 in profit. And that's okay. That's okay. You can make the adjustments, but the important thing is to get going. So just remember, as the video talked about, and, and go back and watch that video, there's just a few things that you need to figure out. Number one, you have to know what it is, what number are you going for. You need to know what your average uh, sale is per item and then you can just do the numbers from there but you got to feed the beast so did any of the panelists want to add anything to that oh and remember this is my first time using StreamYard. the last time we went live I was using OBS so if we run into a few bumps in the road don't worry about it. We'll figure it out as we go along. I'm going to show some of the uh, some of the comments that people are putting up. Hey, the lovely Miss <laughs> Sheila is with us. Did anybody want to want to add anything about about Friday's video as far as getting to a particular number as far as what 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 is your monthly goal weekly goal whatever it may be well the comment is people are working first start out as you learning the plot learning learning so you can get your reading then you build up from there from there Okay, Mike, you kind of break it up there, but I think we got the the gist of it. I think you're you're basically saying, get going, 
make the adjustments and build from there. And if anybody had any questions, oh, I see uh, Mr. Peebles has joined us. Oh, he says, Mike, you're echoing. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, this is different, isn't it, guys? We're used to being in just a live Zoom call where everybody's just talking and 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 doing everything. This is a little different, huh? <laughs> we got. What I was thinking about the video, and I think I'm echoing too. Am I echoing? I don't. Yes, I don't hear an yes. echo. Oh, I somebody's hear, I hear an echo. Okay. For those of you who might be hearing an, an echo, I, I'm not hearing it, but for the panelists, if you go into your uh, camera and mic, uh, go down to audio, and I, you can put echo cancellation on, and that might that might help. I don't know. All right. What about now? Oh, yeah. You're good now. I'm good? Yeah. I have my Bluetooth speaker hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not. I told you guys, I am not a tech savvy guy. Like the universe will talk about before all this. This is. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. You know. I I'm a hustler. I'm not a tech guy. You sound huh? great, Mikey. You sound great now. But what I was saying when I was echoing is, uh, like I was reading and I was helping a lot of new uh, sellers in the comments. Karen was having fun with me too. And uh, a lot of people are worried about profit and worry about that you know, getting started, you know, making that money fast and stuff like that, but they shouldn't be worried about that. They should be worrying about selling on the platform, building sales and getting ungated and, you know, just getting to knowing the whole platform. Then after that, you start worrying about profit and you build the numbers, how much you want to make a week or a day and stuff like that. You got to start small, then you go big. Yeah. Sounds good. I agree with Mikey. I'm thinking, um, yes, a lot of people are concerned about it because they're kind of going into it <laughs> yeah. thinking, um, you know, I, I'm going to make money doing this. And yes, it's our objective to make money, no doubt about that. But I think the first thing you have to do is, as Mikey said, you need to, to, to jump in, learn the systems, learn what works for you. Um, and determine number one is this even something you really want to do you don't just start running with this you have to sort of figure out do you even really like it um is it going to work for you in any way and so um i understand the concern about well how much how much but it really de it, de it really just depends and it also depends on how much time you're willing to devote to it. If you're going to eat, breathe, and sleep it, you're gonna have a different outcome than if you just give it you know, a little bit of time, which is okay. And I think this is a channel for the working class hustlers. What I'd say is regarding profits, don't quit your day job. Don't quit your day job. Don't start by quitting your day job. Keep your day job. Yeah, and that that's important. On that note, everybody's a bunch of people on this panel that do this full time. Karen, you're doing this full time, right? Um, I'm doing it. Let's just say three quarters time because I don't. I'm not. I'm not doing it all day and all night. Am I going to another job currently? No. But, you know, there's only so many hours a week that I put into this. And okay. that's a choice. That's a choice that I'm making. I'm choosing. I'm not a person who's trying to get wealthy doing it. I just want a nice, you know, I just want a nice hustle, so to speak. How about Nate and Elizabeth? You guys are doing this full time, right? Yes, yes full time. Full time. And we, we do other other uh, platforms too. Uh, okay. Are we echoing? Are we echoing back? I'm hearing an echo, but I don't know if that's on. If that's something I need to change. Who else is? No, I hear the echo too. 
year too. We have all the noise uh, echo cancellation. Okay. Maybe unclear. How do I fix it? How do I fix it? <laughs> Sarah, can we hear you? It's me. Yeah. Am I echoing? Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. All right, we'll we'll work that out, guys. I'm not sure what what the deal is that with that whole deal. We'll we'll figure it out. Uh, somebody had a question from Mikey. Let me see if I. Oh, difficulties, difficulties. Yeah, guys, I apologize for for the echo that may be in there. I don't know what the deal is with it because, like I said, this is the first time I've I've used uh, this software, and it's actually working pretty good. But there's probably just something that that needs to be tweaked on there. Oh, we've got somebody from from the UK. That's wow. pretty awesome. I see that. And I think I saw Tennessee and somebody was asking, Mike, did you show up in Dallas? I don't know what that's about. Mikey, were you supposed to be in Dallas? They had some kind of comments on that. Oh, that's worse. Oh, that's even worse. I see Deborah. I always see Deborah. I always see Cameron in, in the comments. It's still echoing. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing it big time. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We might have it now. I don't know. I still got echo here. Anyone not echoing? Now you just spoke and there was no echo in there. So I don't know. Right. What about now? Uh, like okay. I think it's I think it's my laptop. Am I still echoing that? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. I'm on my phone, so I'm gonna look that up and see if there's something we can get to get that out of there. Mute that. Yeah, I can't do nothing about it. I'll have to wait. Yeah, we'll work it out. Like I said, guys, we we apologize for that. Uh, we'll we'll figure that out for next time. I don't know what the deal is with it, but if anybody had any questions, we're gonna address that. One thing I wanted to make sure we covered. One of the hustlers was mentioning that. We're going to need to get some insurance going. Uh, yes. Let's let's attack that. Who wants to take that? Okay. Uh, what I was reading, Amazon switched their insurance policy now. Instead of selling for three consecutive months of ten thousand, if you sell ten thousand in one month, you have to get insurance. Hey, Mikey, did you use Ashlyn? I haven't done, man. I've been dealing with uh, some uh, personal things at home that's been going around, in, you know, for the past year and a half. So let's say I've been locked up. I got you. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting and uh, really a good thing that uh, not only, did, you know, given that they have sort of indicated that we must have insurance if we make $10,000 in sales in a given month, um, that they've also partnered with some insurance agencies and give us an opportunity to get quotes from multiple sources as opposed to us individually having to just, you know, scout around because insurance for e-commerce businesses are I mean, it's kind of specialized, it's different than for um, your typical retailer or in, you know, many other types of businesses. So I thought that was hopeful, but I personally went with um, 
the company the that's company been that tried and true by, by, you know, so, so many, many uh, uh, e-tailers, e-tailers um, just to get it done. Yeah, so so I, I did go ahead and do it because it's, it's, it's for, for everybody's, everybody's benefit. benefit. See, okay. I was worried that they would not work with insurance companies that were not on their preferred list. Is you, that you? You were talking about a preferred list, possibly. Yeah, yeah. And the on the news page, on the front page, when they did that, and you go to the link of their uh, vetted insurance brokers. Um, mm. I felt since Ashley wasn't on there, I was a little concerned. Like, would they honor her policies? Oh, they will honor her policies. They, I, didn't, okay. I didn't see anything at all that restricted um, our use of providers. I think the only stipulation that uh, Amazon made was that they too had to be named on the policy. And so, um, so long as that is the case, then I think... I can't say for certain, but it, I haven't uploaded my policy as yet, but I I could do that any day and I'm not anticipating any problem if my reading of their communication was accurate. Okay. So, um, but I mean, we have a lot of merchandise. Um, most of us, um, even though we haven't been in the business for a tremendous long time, with the exception of La Machine, but <laughs> most of us haven't been in for a real, real long time. Pretty quickly, you start to accumulate a lot of inventory and to consider having that, whatever that amount of inventory is, without any policy to protect it from, um, the, the, the products themselves from damage or destruction, as well as protecting um, us as sellers from, um, you know, any kind of uh, action that could occur from the use of our products. Uh, I don't, I don't, it's probably not a prudent way to do business. When you first start out, you know, when you're doing obviously less than 10,000 a month. It might not yet be a priority, but uh-huh. even if at less than 10,000 a month, I, I don't think you can go wrong because there's cost of doing business. Insurance is a business cost. True. So that's my thought. What, what's everybody else thinking about it? Yeah. <laughs> my thought is, okay, I'm going to have to go and get it. Now, yeah, I don't. My thought the same way. Of course, I'm gonna have to get it. I don't recommend people approach it the way I do. I'm one of them guys. I've always operated along the fringes of legality, uh, so that's just me. But now I'm gonna be forced to do it, and uh, yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, in the meantime, look at this. You know this guy? <laughs> He's got a question. Is it safe to sell toys these days? I heard. Yes, Miguel. About it is safe to sell toys. <laughs> let me get on. Let, let's unpack his question. He said, "I heard." Oh, I read it. About... I would say yes. It is. Whoa. They're just doing a toys compliance right now because there's a new. Uh, they're doing their Christmas and stuff like that. So don't worry about the documents. Just keep on approving, applying for it. And if you don't get approved, try to sell your toys as fast as you can get them. Get them out. That's the only thing you can do. If you just get denied, keep on applying for it. And then if they just say you're finally denied, um, just try to sell them as fast as you can. That's what I've been doing. It's a really good question because there's a lot of talk among um, e-commerce folks, Amazon on, sellers, man. about uh, Amazon really cracking down on the sale of toys and you know, sending endless requests for um, compliance documents for 
for items that have been listed forever and a day, but then you list it and all of a sudden they want you to provide some compliance documents, okay. even for items sometimes that they're on the listing for. So what, what I'm seeing is a lot of e-sellers saying, you know, Q4 is coming up and toys are a big deal, but a lot of people are backing away from toys from that reason. I'm not saying that anyone should do that. I'm just saying um, I think there's going to be a somewhat less competition in the toy market because of all of the Amazon re requirements all of a sudden related to that. Does anyone know where we would get the compliance documents? We actually had two of them in one week. You can get them from the manufacturers, but trying to get them from the manufacturers is harder than anything. They yeah. should already be posted up on Amazon before you start selling toys. Yeah, they should. And the question really be, or the issue in my mind becomes, I've got five of X toy. All right. Mm -hmm. How much time do I want to spend tracking down the manufacturer and going back and, and forth? Um, you know, if you have, uh, you know, 10 the hundred of, of them, them yeah. it might be worth it but it's, it's just something to to think about sometimes it's just easier as mikey says if they if they call you on it they give you a certain amount of time to get um the um the, the documentation client. that's when you see people dropping the prices on the on the items just trying to get get rid of them and just be done with them if you have just a few Uh, looks like we got another question. Joanna uh, listed a toy yesterday, FBA, and got an email stating that I needed to provide documents. So that's basically what we just addressed on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you don't they that they usually, do they give you about 30 days? No, they give you about they two used weeks. To, when it was the first of the year, you had plenty of time. But these this last round, I get it a week later in the mail, and I'm like, why? Um, I've been holding my toys back for October, November, so I know they'll sell through very quickly. So I'm going to just send them all at once then, hoping to sell them out. Yep. That's what I've That's been doing. That's a great strategy. That's a great strategy. We just had one. We just had one last, what, last week. And it wasn't even uh, three days. And they pulled them. They pulled, they pulled the list. They made them inactive just like that. And we only had, what? Was it two notifications? Maybe one or two notifications. One, one notification of the compliance doctor needed. And I can tell you which toys it is. One of the things that I lost that if you're putting them in, if you're putting in toys that it says top, uh, it children's four under four. years under four, you're going to get that compliance doctor as soon as as soon as it, you hit that that uh, was it the list button on uh Spotify to, to send it into FBA, you're gonna get a notification right then there. If we got it. Yep. As soon as it goes active, you're gonna get that notification. Exactly. Yeah. So don't buy it. I, it was one guy already talked about he did it and he had already just bought his posters to send it to FBA and they were saying get that thing out there. Yeah. It's 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 not they're not playing. No, they're not playing at all. But you can like I say you can always uh, apply to appeal it and then they'll give you, I think it was seven days and mine's been seven days. And if I get denied, I just apply again. So I can, so I can try to get the, get the toys out of my inventory. Exactly. Good tip, Mikey. Good tip. Do what you got to do. I'm telling you, I don't play. <laughs> as soon as it hits active, I'm selling it. So Miguel was saying uh, he's ungated in toys, but he's not sure if it's a good idea to invest in toys or invest in other categories. I have gotten away from toys myself. Uh, I, I just right, don't have the time. Yeah, right now it's not a good time to invest in toys. It really is not because all these toys compliance. Once it goes away, then after that, it right before Q4, you want to do toys. No, but who's okay. to say it's actually going to go away? I don't think it's going to go away. they're so picky right now. I mean, you know, you got that, and then you got that insurance issue that's creeping up, and it's a reason why they want that liability. 
But on the insurance too, that is a you can go on Amazon and they have free insurance things and get free quotes and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. So we got another question. Uh, Katie is saying, "How can one know which product sells good?" I've sold so far four different, and Amazon.usa took all took all of my gains. I think that she said. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal with that. Um, you're only going to learn from experience. Uh, you use the tools that are available and the tools put the odds in your favor that you're going to have success. So your tools plus your experience plus actual trial and error. There is no, you can never be sure this is business. This isn't any different than other businesses that you respect. They don't always work. We're talking about Amazon. Amazon makes mistakes. Everything that Amazon tried to do didn't work. Nobody talks about the failures. But if you're coming into this business thinking that it's unlike other businesses, meaning you outside. will make some mistakes, no. uh, perish the thought. It, it's going to happen. Don't let that stop you. But you get better, OK? But you get better by actually doing it. You use the tools, but the tools don't guarantee anything. You know, the tools are confusing when you're first starting. There's so many tools. I wonder, I wonder from the panelists, if you, if you were new starting, I mean, brand new, for instance, brand new starting out and you only had one tool that you could purchase or invest in, what would it be? Inventory lab. Because it comes with Scottify too. Oh, if I had one tool, it would be tactical arbitrage. If I had to go with one, that's what. Nate, it, Nate and Elizabeth, Sarah, how about you guys? I, I would be Reb Seller. Um, I don't know if anybody's done that one, Reb Seller. But yeah, when I'm scouting yeah. online, that makes yeah. me decision oh, for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Keeper, Reb Seller and Keeper. No, I say be That's cool. It. Oh, wife oh, says be cool. But I, well, no, no. I would say be cool because as a news seller, you don't need that, right? What's that? Oh, as a news seller. I, I would seller. say you would need inventory. Brand new. Yeah, as a new seller. That's what Horace oh, okay. was saying. That's what Karen's saying. I, I would say inventory lab because you're going to need it to get your shipments faster. And it also has Scottify on it. And then the second tool would be Keepa, so you can bind them two together. That's all you really need is your sell central app, inventory lab, and Keepa to start out yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I That's had it. only one tool. And I'm Keep even good tool. with free Keepa. Right. Right. You can use free Keepa too. If I had one tool, just one, yeah, I to would start use, off with, you don't even need I to would pay start for it. with inventory lab. And the reason why I would start with Inventory Lab is because Inventory Lab um, helps you with your your business setup and sort of frames all your sort of business decisions, allows you to look very quickly at how much profit are you making, you know, what your seller your your big sellers are. Um, it has uh, the scout that enables you to set criteria about, you know, how much profit, if you want 30% ROI, then when you scan items automatically, you can just see, all right, is this something that would give me 30% ROI at the buy box price or not? So I would definitely, if I had just one, and I'm glad I'm able to have more than one now, but... I would have inventory lab. That's what I would have if I had just one. And then when I wanted to really move my business, I jump on to tactical arbitrage. <laughs> okay. Can you guys hear me? I switched my microphone. Can you guys hear me or no? Yeah, we can hear you. I, I can hear you here in Vegas. But it's still echoing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, it's some kind of feedback between the speakers on the computers. Everybody got has the computers speakers up, and the feedback is coming. Kind of, you're you're rebroadcasting what you're hearing. That's why we. Well, I, for a minute, I put my headphones in. Well, I'm on my it. AirPods. Yeah. Yeah. Are I'm you putting my headphones in? It's me doing the feedback. Right. I tried to hook up some computer speakers, and it didn't work. No, it's, it's, it's everybody. That we're not doing that. Karen is doing because Karen sounds perfect. What, what are your What are your settings, Karen? I did what you said we should do. Go into the mic, and I unclicked. Um, I I unclicked something there. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, I went into audio. Excuse me. Yeah. And I unclicked auto cancellation. It was clicked, but I unclicked it, and that seemed to um, make things better. So now, uh, what is clicked is automatically just my mic. That's the only thing that is uh, set. Hmm. It looks like uh, Horace Joanna's got a question, and I. I bet she's anxiously awaiting something yes. after that. My account is at risk for deactivation due to a one star review. How long will my account be at risk? <sighs> yeah. I wish, Joanna, can you give us a little more, inf uh, not a lot of information? But did you get a one-star review for what reason? Because depending upon what the reason for the review was, you might be able to get the review removed, uh, deleted, removed, deleted. Because yeah. I'm thinking one on one review. How could that put your entire account at risk? Unless it was for somebody saying that it was. Uh, what counterfeit or something and if you don't have many reviews one one bad review that's not going to put your account at risk no right, right. no okay so we need to joanna come back on that we need to unpack that a little bit further uh looks like benny says if you have if you get an ip com complaint possible counterfeit and the listing goes inactive how do you get the product back Removal order. Create a removal order. Create a removal order. Thanks, Nate. You got it. You got it. Uh, one of the hustlers said if they had one tool, it would be Keepa. Uh, somebody uses Rev Seller. They love it. One tool for a newbie is Keepa. Let's see. Let's see only have four reviews hmm oh i see what you're saying so it's, it's the percentage because you don't have a lot of have a lot of reviews then a bad one bad one really can throw you off i, I, I think that's what we're going with that that makes sense what is the name of the name of you she's stating she's stating it was a milk fulfilled by fulfilled by merchant She says she only has four reviews. Oh, I disputed the I review. Disputed. I, I wonder what you said. I wonder what you said. That was melted. Hmm. Well, you're just gonna you're have just to gonna tell have us. to tell us what was the review. Was the review. Well, it was. Well, it's already disputed, it's already disputed, and, disputed they said, no. and they said no. They're keeping. They're it. keeping it. Really? Really? Yeah, we have one of those. You just gotta let it drop. I think you just, think keep, you just on, keep on, you know, you know, doing your work, doing your work, and, and be extra, extra careful. And eventually, and eventually, it will go away. I don't know what's going on now. We we really got some bad echo going. 
Yeah, yes. I'm echoing. I can hear echo, echo I, think. I think. But I didn't I change anything. anything. Okay. Now you sound great again. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, you know what? Every year we ought to talk about meltables. We ought to talk about meltables because that's a great way to get poor reviews. Um, I, I mean, no, meltables are a great way to totally ruin your account. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's not as much competition for the meltables during the summer for very good reason. You can, you can make money off the meltables, but you really, really need to invest in the right supplies. I recently got, uh, I didn't, fortunately, this person, uh, the customer contacted me directly and indicated that her uh, product was melted. And I asked, you know, I said, I want to make it right for you. Do you uh, want a refund or do you want the product? And they said, well, I'll take the product if it's, uh, you know, packed in ice because I'm in Arizona and it's 110 degrees. Well, I <laughs> And, you know, heaven only knows how long the customer allowed the product to sit in the mailbox or, mm -hmm. you know. The nail so I, I did fix it. I found a way. But, um, you know, there was an ice pack and a styrofoam personal cooler and the whole nine yards. So You did all of that? Well, I did. I did, <laughs> but I found wow. a great deal. It was a very small product, and I shipped it in a, a styrofoam cooler intended for slides, intended for laboratory slides. Okay. Found a great deal on Amazon for about 300 of them for about 20 bucks, sure. So now that's what I put my little product in, the little personal mini cooler, and I can send it. But um, there's some real science behind sending multiples. That doesn't, that doesn't help her, the science of multiples. But it, I, I'm just saying it's something that we should talk about every year because that's a, a quick way for um, new sellers, experienced sellers, anyone to get bad reviews. <laughs> Here's a question we get a lot from newbies. Um, what would the right amount of capital to start selling? Uh, yeah, for me, I would have to say it would be good if you had between 500 and 1,000 to start with, but it does not matter. At the end of the day, you just start. Just start with what you got. Because the, the truth, truth is, is, you need, you need to, to just, just start, start doing it. And you don't need a whole bunch of stuff to start doing it. A lot of what you need to learn, it's not about the volume. It's just about getting started. So if anybody else wants to add what you might think the right amount of capital to start selling, anybody want to take that? Well, here's what I will say about it is um, I, I had a light bulb the other day. I was talking with an investment banker uh, about my business and I was having a very candid conversation with an investment uh, banker about my business. And he said, uh, well, look, do you have a business or do you have a hustle? And so I say that to say how much capital you need depends on what you're trying to do. If you are starting a hustle, so to speak, you're you're starting you're you're trying to make money, and you're obviously trying to make as much money as you can. But if it's a hustle, you can you can start with very little money because there you're not necessarily investing in a lot of tools. Maybe you're selling some uh, uh, books you have around the house. Uh, you. You find a few things on deep clearance somewhere, you send those in. 
So you're kind of building a hustle. Now, by the time that you're really building a business, then definitely, I would say, you know, that 500 to 1,000 would be about the minimum you would need to try to establish a business. But I'm sure people have, you know, done it with less and people have done it with more. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Mama said that depends on you. <laughs> uh, I think we, Mike? we address this when I'm only selling less than a thousand a month. Do I need to get insurance? I don't think that's going to be, you need to be selling. What, what's the deal on that guys? 10,000 a month for two months consecutive? One month, 10,000. One month now. In a month. Yep. Okay. Yep. Is anybody getting daily payouts? I don't get it. I do. I do. Okay. Uh, so someone's asking, Alex is asking, what company, if any, do you guys use to get daily payouts? Payability. Oh, I have it just automatically. Yeah. Amazon lets Amazon me take out daily. Take out daily. Yeah, pay a bill Okay. Yeah, I, I heard that there's a way that you can get daily payouts or certainly more regular payouts without using a third party that you can just make the request from mm -hmm. Amazon. I don't know how to do it, but, but Sarah, is that what you're doing? Yeah, mine was on my account. Yeah, it's every 24 hours. And I've heard mm -hmm. newer sellers. Um, I've only had my account one year, um, but I've heard newer sellers are more likely to have it than someone who has a five-year-old account. Okay. Yeah, that's that's something important, guys. Because if you're going to use a, a company like Payability, then they're going to take a percentage, right, uh, Nate? That's right. That's right. So you're going to have to factor in, and at that point. What are you weighing? You're weighing the cost of having that money earlier versus the expense to get it earlier. If it makes yes. sense for you, if, then you know you could go ahead and 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 allocate that expense. But I don't do it myself. I'd uh, love to see a screenshot of what the settings are in in um, Seller Central in order to get them to pay out. To on a daily basis. On a daily basis. I didn't think they did it, but <laughs> I've heard more That's than one person neat. say oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah. They do. They do. Because yeah. we talked about it in the group, but not daily. I think we were talking about uh instead of having to wait to two weeks, you could get it uh earlier. Remember because then we were Mikey was asking that and then it does it does it reset your your time period and all of this stuff. But Does it daily have it automatically now for you a daily payout, or do you have to go in and sort of push? I have to ask for it daily okay. if I want it. Otherwise, and when I do it, it resets. So it'll be another two weeks if I wait on them. Got it. Okay. No, I, I know payability. They charge, uh, you get a fee, but they also have the I believe it's a, it's a like debit like credit, debit card. credit and, card, and every time you use it, you get one point of cash back on every purchase. So if you're using that card to fund your other, you know, your purchases, you're getting one point eight percent back. So that actually that goes back to about that free money back. Because now, now you buy your purchase, you get the 1.8 percent back plus what you're plus using to use your Kohl's money. money. Now that now that it just keeps raising. Keeps raising. I want to take a moment, guys, to um, to thank a couple of people that actually donated a little bit. I got it. A super chat from Joanna. I want to thank you for that support, and also one from Katie. Really appreciate you. Uh, contributing every little bit goes a long way and look at that 
Mr. Peebles ain't told us nothing. And he's been getting daily payouts. <laughs> <laughs> getting all that money. Ain't told me nothing. <laughs> See, I think we need to hear a lot more from Brian is, is quiet. You know, he'll let all of us just go ahead and uh -huh. talk. Meanwhile, he's got the goods. And look at this. Connie uh, Salerno. I have been getting daily payments from Amazon. Guys, this is something we're going to have to unpack. So we're going to make sure that this is a topic for next week. We'll take a little bit time to, uh, time to really get educated and kind of bone up on this so that we can share that. that I'm that sure is huge. brand new sellers really appreciate, really appreciate the ability to, to do that. It seems like a lot of people in here use Inventory Lab but has anyone heard or used seller board i'm currently in a 60-day free trial and plan to use it instead of inventory lab i've heard of seller seller board i have not used it does anybody want to address that it doesn't let you send listings to amazon and print out your stickers and everything like inventory lab it just does the accounting part that um, inventory lab does but my value in inventory lab is my stickers, um, my badges. Yes, the accounting is important, but if you can get the entire system together, because I love the way inventory lab streamlines the entire process. I didn't want to do it at first, but once I allowed myself to, to, to really learn it, I, I have, it's an integral part of my business. Yeah. I love that. I keep track of my inventory yeah. that I sell Amazon should be ashamed. There too. I've yeah. been saying you're that. Right. You're right. You're right. You, you you're hear right. me preaching all the time. Amazon, they don't help you run the business. They, they just help you get things out so that they can sell. <laughs> they don't help you. And the success comes in running the business. <laughs> so, yeah. And they want you to sell it cheap. Sell it cheap. Oh yeah, and if you don't, they'll they'll coax you, they'll encourage you. It's called stranded inventory. Yes. <laughs> Hi all, could you please help me? I found product for sale, but I can't find the wholesaler. How do I solve this problem? Oh, uh, <laughs> we'll let Mikey take that one. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll, switch and do things to get this fixed so there's no feedback now on the audio is there okay where, where's it at all right, all right. Okay. Uh, it should be on your screen mikey uh okay, I'll see it, but I can't find it. well that is a problem because we can't really help you because to find a wholesale for the product you would have to try on some, on some products, products, you can go, go to, to the, the distribution, distribution of that product and see if you can sell it there and get invoices. Or you can find a distributor that sells that product and you can buy 10 items of that, get an invoice, send it to Amazon, then you can get ungated for that and then you can start selling that product on Amazon. I can't really tell you much because I don't know the product and I couldn't tell you what wholesaler to find. I, I'm, I, I, I could use some more information about this question. I'm wondering, is the issue that they are trying to get ungated, so they need a source to purchase wholesale? Or is the issue they really like the product and want to sell it on an ongoing basis, so they want to have That's what it a source? Is. That's what it is. They're looking for a source. All right. So a source. So usually products do have some information um, about, you know, who's the distributor. And then when you go, I'm told that if you Google the distributor and make an inquiry there, and then you, you just keep going deeper and deeper until you hopefully get to the actual source and make an inquiry. Somebody, uh, Johanna had something to add. She uses Sellerboard in conjunction with Inventory Lab. 
So she'll use Inventory Lab for shipments and the app. Seller board is to see my inventory. Okay, that's interesting. I, you know, now you got to now you now you're paying for two different systems though. So yeah, I, I would put my say, inventory in Inventory Lab. It's called Unlisted Inventory. So anything that is not um, listed FBM or anything that's not listed. Uh, FBA that I have in my possession is in unlisted inventory. When it right. comes in my door, it all goes into unlisted inventory, and then I draw it over into my batches that I send to uh, Amazon. Right. And, and so that helps me from a tax perspective, right? I really need that at yes, tax time. Yes. They just finished an update to, to, to the inventory system on inventory mm -hmm. level. So, so it's, it's, I think it's, I think it's the best. So, I would say this about inventory right, line. And then there's, there's a couple of people that have made some comments out here that I didn't address. Um, inventory lab is always improving. And when they're going through some updates, there will be moments where they, it can be a, a, just a little bit glitchy. They address it quick though. So you'll know usually before you know, if you just go into your notifications or whatever, they're very good about communication and they'll let you know, hey, we're working on something and it's usually for a good purpose. They continue to improve. And what you're paying for that software, it is worth it, uh, in my opinion. I just wanted to put that out there though, because I think somebody, I can't find the comment, but somebody was saying, is Inventory Lab having problems because I couldn't get my batch to, to upload or whatever the problem is? Every now and then you'll run into a glitch, come back, they fixed it. In, in most cases. And their tag gets back you in the same day. I've emailed them. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, if you have 10,000 to 20,000 to start, should you do retail arbitrage or wholesale? Now, I want, I want Mikey and I want Nate to take that because those are your areas. If, if I've got 10,000 to 20,000 to start, Go ahead, Nate. You do that one first, because you already know my answer is going to be. Laura, I, I think we have the same answer right now, right now, because of the time of the year. It is. Uh, yeah, go to the store. Go to the store. Yeah, Judy. Judy I, I do RA. I was explaining to you that yesterday in your comments. I start RA and build, build, and then build up. I mean, I would take. I would even uh, like. Uh, I've been helping people too outside of our group and stuff like that and there's this guy that lives in florida that had 10k to start i told him to start with four 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 k get all his tools get get your eie number get your tax id get all that stuff and get all your you know your keepa and your torque lab just get everything started and after that just go full-blown ra spend three grand in ra go to different stores and just start scanning 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 and see what you can find to sell if you can find a product that makes three dollars profit and you pay eight bucks, uh, you know, we'll pay eight bucks for it. You make three dollars. That's a self. I mean, your RA, your ORI is going to be really low, but it's going to help you build and build and build. And then you just keep on going. Just reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. And reinvest. If someone's got that. I wish I had a 20K to start and do wholesale because that's what a lot of people start when they have that big of money to start out with. But RA is probably the best way to go to really start because you get to know the platform. You get to know what you can sell and what you can't sell. And, and you're learning and you're going to learn your mistakes. If you drop 20K on wholesale, you don't know nothing. You don't know if that product's going to sell. You don't know if it, you know, if it's going to tank real fast because someone's going to come in. There's got more capital than you do. Because people that's got a hundred k in person and capital, they're not worried about it. They're not because they got the money to do it. So I would really start RA. I would take about five k, build tools, get everything you need, and start scanning. And, and, don't go, and you can get ungated with that 5K too. Don't go deep. Don't get ungated with that. Don't go deep. Go wide. Go wide. Spread, mm -hmm. it out. Spread it out. Don't put it let all me, in one place. Let me add something to that before we move on to the next question. For the newbies out there, you will be surprised at how fast a year goes by. Don't get into this race to, to try to become a millionaire. Take the long, steady road. Be more like Karen. 
take it easy and pay attention and learn. You'll know when it's time to drop 10 grand into, into something. If you're a newbie and you're asking these type of questions, you ain't ready. So <laughs> uh, let me get to the judge. So she said in the comments, it says, says you're trying to replace your salary. You're not going to replace your salary for starting on Amazon. Mm, I'll tell you that now from a person. Me personally, I work full time job. I do HVAC for a living and I've been selling for almost five months and I've hit 60 K. Yes, I've hit my salary for a year, but I'm not going to quit. Not until I get to a goal where I feel comfortable with. And then after that, I decided, hey, I'm going to be done with HVAC. But yeah, you're not going to make it. You're not going to replace your salary selling on Amazon as a newbie. You won't do it. That's just telling the straight out truth about it. Yeah. yeah. Not right away. Think about the long game. Think about health insurance. I want to pay off my house first. Then I'll quit. Yeah, I would pay, I would pay stuff off, like the build up, keep your job. But if you're doing it full time, I'm going to give you mad props. Like me. <laughs> you guys are doing it, but just to start out as a newbie, we're don't doing do it. it fun, but it, it's come with challenges. Yeah. It, it, we can have people to tell us the real story. When we first started, uh, my husband started watching videos, and a lot of them like 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 the beginning of this one, hundred dollars a day. But how much did you spend on your product? How much did it cost you for shipping? Sure. What about the things that you're using, like inventory lab, tactical arbitrage, all the other things, the expenses, the bags, the boxes? How much of that did you really own? On top of that, as they said, medical insurance, just your regular bills, your rent, your mortgage, your grocery, car insurance, all of that. So if you eventually want to do it full time, that's great. But you have to do it like, use COVID as an example. Put money aside and get stuff in the fam. Yep. So, so if a lot of us are doing FBA, meaning, meaning we send our shit to Amazon, Amazon and then they take care of everything for us. for us. During COVID, During COVID when they shut when down they the warehouse, you, you have no money coming in. Because there's nobody there to send out the product. So one of the things that my husband and I recommend is do FBA, but also have some product or the knowledge, knowledge to, to go buy your own item and ship it yourself, just in just case in something case happens, happens, you still have you a way of making money. money. And also, and also if you want at a later, later date, date, use other use platforms. Because I think a lot of us lot that, are, that are on now, now we have multiple we have platforms. platforms. Yes. For the simple For fact, if something happens, happens with Amazon, Amazon your income, your income comes from preaching calls. Call. But if you have other if platforms, you, have platforms, you still have ways have of making money. money. And if you still and have a job, have job, again, you have ways of making money. So don't and put you all of the all eggs in this basket, basket unless financially you can, you can do, that. do that. Because the level of stress that comes about when you don't do this the right way, and now yes. you're, you can't even focus on properly running the business because once stress enters into the equation, now we fighting, you know. And I've been fighting too. <laughs> Full time job, doing Amazon, selling on eBay, selling on Macari, doing Instacart, doing DoorDash, you know. I'm building that capital up just so I can try to quit my day job. Okay, so before we move on, let me say thank you to, to Hassie Johnson. Thank you so much for that donation. Um, Brian wanted to add something because we had a hustler looking for a product he says the distributor should be on the back of the physical product in other words to unpack that you may have to order the product people do that they will order the product so that they can physically get some clues indications if it's if you think it's that big of a hit uh that product could really be successful you might want to do that uh thanks for that mr peebles yes i, I just wanted to say something about sort of how much income you make now, now, check my check math, because math, math isn't my isn't strong, strong suit. suit. <laughs> but one of the one things that I learned, learned from this group, you know, picked up along the way, way is that, that 
in the beginning, I wasn't even spending enough money to make the kind of money that I wanted to. It just, you know, and so I'm looking at, let's just say, low ball. Let's just say you made 20% profit on your investment. Like, four thousand. you spend $4,000, you're going to get about $800 back. That's 20%. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's what real numbers are. Now, you can raise it to 30%, you can raise it to 50%, but clearly, $4,000 spent, right, to get 20 or 30 or 40 or 50% back. So, so on a monthly basis, you know, you're turning, you're spending a lot of money in order to... Um, to, to make these, this, this, this money. You know, I don't know what Mikey's budget is, but it's a nice one. Your budget is bigger than mine. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's not just the budget, though. It's your cost of the items that you're getting. Well, that's what I mean. You know, what you're spending on your items, yeah. One, one of the one, things one that, of the things we, that do we do is we do a lot of research. Lot of research. Uh, we don't pay retail uh, for anything. Mm-hmm. We have coupons. We go to places that we can get discounts, like, for example, Target. If you go and you buy X amount of things, you get gift cards. Um, with if Let's say if you go some of the department stores, like Kohl's, will give you money if you spend so much. So then you can use that as a coupon for your next purchase. Um, and when I say um, coupons, so for example, if you want to do a grocery item, go on your Sunday paper, whatever paper, and look for an actual coupon. Go to the grocery store, whatever that item is. There's also apps. One that I use is Ibotta. It's a free app. You can put it on your phone, and you can scan. You get your coupons from them. So every so often, I transfer the money, and it goes into my PayPal account. So let's say I get 50 cents off for bread. If that's what I'm sending to Amazon, for example, it's going to cost me 50 cents less because they reimburse me that 50 cents. So it's a lot of work, but I'm not paying retail for everything. So in our case, it's a little bit easier because there's two of us. So I do all the coupon hunting and he does the research on the actual products. And okay, this this is going to do well. We should look into this, and from there, I'll go hunt for coupons. So for us, it's easier because of two of us. Yeah, if you have two people, it's easy. You can make a list. One yeah. person can go get it, and the other one can do the other work. See, with me, right. me, I work a full-time job, so early in the mornings when I'm getting ready for my job, I'll make my list for Amazon when I get off. Yeah. So I go out to the store and get that, and I'll come home, and I'll list it and do everything else. It's a lot harder for me. It's a lot more stressful. And it's a lot more time and effort for me because I don't get done doing what I have to do until one, two o'clock in the morning, then get up and go to work and do it all over again. So it's a lot easier when you have two people. But see, you you guys got your inventory and me, I clear shelves. <laughs> hey, hey Mike, hey Mike, here's something for you to look forward to. Everything that you're doing right now. And now you're going to be like me. On top of that, you're going to have to create content every week. You're going to have to host. You're going to have yes, to I, you guys know. <laughs> you guys see. Yeah. I'm so. I am real. starting a YouTube I'm channel, so guys. Real. So it's, it's there. Work that you're going to have to do. <laughs> yep, it's another stress level I'm going to have to put on top. Is- but let me let me unpack that. And Karen, I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you for bringing this up. I've been very adamant about going on my rants and tirades about business because people come into this and all of a sudden when they decide to sell on amazon all of a sudden they want to exist in a world where it's no longer business this is business i'm trying for a trucking company a national trucking company it's called yellow freight some people know it as roadway some people know it as yrc been around over a hundred years long time here is the point yeah, these people are happy to be, I mean, we're celebrating getting hats, t-shirts. If we're operating on a 97% of 
uh, operating ratio. That means for every dollar that comes in, if we keep three pennies, we're doing good. Now, obviously you can't work on those margins, but just put it into perspective. When you come out here complaining because 20%, 30% ain't good enough for you, everything's gotta be a thousand percent return on investment or, or you don't wanna do it. Then you turn around and go to work. You go to work for a company that can afford to pay you and the CEOs and the private jets, and they're working on margins as small as 97% operating ratios. Get your mind right and get your money right. Somebody on the panel mentioned earlier, get going. You can make your adjustments, get uh-huh. going. Get We're trying going. to you know, hit these home mm-hmm. runs thinking you're going to be in front of a Ferrari in a pool with a bunch of girls. No. no. That's the stuff you see on these YouTube. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 No. That's not my personal aspiration. But <laughs> I wish. I wish. But I, I'm not trying to do that. You know, I'm trying to well, many levels I don't aspire. <laughs> I, mean, I already I, I, I were I rather you know be that way instead of Ferraris take vacations with my family and stuff like that. But you're not no you're not there's 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 resellers that are making thousands and thousands of dollars and mm-hmm. you just have to spend your money wisely and smart. But you don't want I'm them Ferraris. Realistic expectations. You always hear me talking about realistic expectations. If you're gonna come out here and do this business and you want to complain how saturated it is yeah it's saturated if you're that's not part of business how, though if, if you're not learning how to make make 15 percent 20 percent 30 percent margins if you think that everything has to be 500 percent return on investment then yes it is crowded the days of the wild wild west that's over but there's still money in this and there's still enough for you and if you think you, it's not going to work here you're going to go somewhere else and all of a sudden you think you're not going to have to make mistakes. You, you, you think it's going to all of a sudden, everything's going to be fast. See, everybody wants instant gratification. Yes. You can run, but you can't hide. If you ain't going to do Amazon, I don't care where you go. It's not going to be overnight unless you, you get to learn. A lot of learn. I like what you're saying there, Horace, but you know how I am. I sell fast. I'm in, in and out, in and out, in and out. And you ain't left your job yet either, though. No, I'm out. No, I don't plan on so, leaving my job until I hit a true. certain amount that I want to make. Exactly. And that takes time. Yep. Like they <laughs> said, after my first year, I'll see what how much I make, how much of gross sales, how much I brought home in profit for myself that I put back because I put my profits back and I just use whatever I got to put back in the inventory. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, when, and after and I the whole year, it's, just, it's a plan on your business. It's just how you want to do it. Some, there's some resellers I know that quit in six months because they can afford to do it. But with me, I'm like, no, I'm going to wait a year and see how it goes. And if it doesn't go the way I want it to go, I'll still keep working and I'll still do yeah. side hustles. But when someone asks you, Mikey, what is the lowest return on investment you're willing to accept on a particular uh, product yeah, you yeah, well, go into, how low will you go? Well, with me, it's a different return on investment mm-hmm. because in our groups that we have, everybody knows mine's 75 to 100%. But since Miguel was talking about on these toys, I'm doing 30% on these toys to get rid of them. I mean, mm-hmm. if I buy it for $1.50, I'll make $3 off of it. I'm happy. That's that's all it is, too. I get my investment back and I make a little money off of it. Yep. A dollar made is a dollar you didn't have. Yep. Yep. That's how it is, too. I mean, and like, Someone, I'm going to say someone, uh, Mahab says, how long have you started selling RA? Me personally, I've been selling RA the whole time. I haven't done OA or anything like that. Um, that's what we were talking about, but another stress level. That's what my YouTube channel is going to be about. It's nothing but RA. So. He's uh, asking about a prep center. I, no. No. Unless I you're making the too. revenue for a prep center. No. Because that's an, you. an extreme, you. an extreme expense. Thank because you. you're paying somebody's salary. You're paying someone to do everything that you do. On top of that, be, you have your own expenses. Yep, yeah, and you're going to be waiting on product that hit Amazon too. By the time yeah, my product cool. already hit Amazon, your your product's still sitting there waiting to get shipped in. So and prep possibly center, the price yeah. is tanking Tank. on Amazon. Yeah, I was going to say that too. That's you right. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yes. Oh How many God. times have you guys heard me say, 
you want to use a prep center, you could easily tack on another two weeks to the process. That's the right. Time you bought it to the time and you have actually available. The only time you should use a yeah, and only time you should use a prep center if you're selling in bulk, if you're doing wholesale, that's the only time you really want to do a prep center. If you don't want to fill up your garage, someone in the questions earlier uh, in the comments earlier says, you know, I don't have enough room in my garage. What should I do to store it? FBA send in shipments at a time. Send shipments send in at a time. FBA. That's what right. I. That's what I do. If I don't have enough room in my garage, I'll take half of that shipment and I'll send it out. And then a couple of days later, I'll send another one out because you got to realize the inventory is going to get there no matter what yeah. to Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you don't have room, start sending it. I mean, it could be one li one listing and you know one SKU. Send it in. Just start sending it in hundreds at a time. You've got three hundreds in your garage. Send a hundred at a time. You have UPS pick it up or go drop it off, and then to start sending, keep them sending it in. That's all you got to do. Is just keep going and going and going. Yeah. One of the things and that you know, with, with time, time you get better. You get better yeah. at identifying the things that will sell quickly so that mm -hmm. oftentimes when you buy it, you need to send it in. You don't That's need right. to just right. store it. You get better at mm -hmm. finding those things that you can buy today and ship tomorrow. Ship it. Ship it. Yep. Well, just to piggyback on that, Karen, uh, one of the things that we have learned is if we find something that is selling that fast and we really want to send it into Amazon, We'll buy, when we test something, we buy five of the item. No matter what it is, we'll buy five and see how long it takes to sell. So if it sells right away, then we know, okay, this is a hot product. We're going to send it in. However, we don't want to lose the momentum. So let's say, for example, we'll buy 20 and we fulfill it ourselves, but we've also purchased, let's say, 30, 40, 50 of them and sent into Amazon. So while it's in process, it's in route to Amazon, we're, we're still selling it because we're selling out. it ourselves. So we've got yeah, 20. You're doing, a split, you're doing a split listing. Yeah. You're selling yes, FBA and then I you're do. selling yeah. FBA. We have 20 here that we're selling and it's already in route. So it depends on where what, where the warehouse is that you're going to. So for us, it takes on the average a week to 10 days to get to Amazon and get listed and active. Well, during that time, we have enough product to cover that we mm. And then by the time we get ready to run out, our FBA inventory has gone active. So we're not missing a beat. This week, we, hit a two day, we had a two-day. Yeah. We sent it out. And within two days, it's already hit the warehouse. It already hit the warehouse. Thank you for that. that and then you got two different sales, too, going on, too, because you have your right. FBA right. sales and you have your FBM right. sales. Right. That is something that definitely needed to be touched on momentum mm -hmm. that is key in this business uh -huh. you don't have that inventory available when that customer wanted it gone you will never get that time back you can never regain that momentum you either had it when he was ready or yeah. you didn't and that's the end of it so use these strategies in the fba merchant fulfill use them both hey Everybody, let's say hello to Virginia. We ain't heard hello, from her Virginia. <laughs> Hi, Virginia. Hey, hello. Virginia. Let's see what else. Can a beginner do tactical arbitrage? I answered that question already, horse. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. But we can add on to that too. That what we were talking about on the phone. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to beginner tap doing that tap arbitrage or retail, there'll be there'll be Horace's YouTube channel, and then I'll be kind of collabing with him because I'm the RA guy that's going to be doing RA. So you can see on both worlds. And you, if you're not paying attention to Horace's videos now, if you want to do tap arbitrage, I would go ahead and start looking at the videos and do the lightning course, checking out the lightning course and stuff like that. And then uh, once I get mine going and going like that, you can see the retail arbitrage uh, style that I do, because you're going to see what, how I go into the store, what am I getting and stuff like that. I'm not going to be uh, my YouTube channel. I'm not going to hide anything back because I sell fast. That's, that's my business model. As soon as I find a product, I get it. I send it to Amazon and I'm trying to sell as fast as I can to build, build my capital up for my next 
payment so I can find something different because I want my sales performance to be up, up, up so I can start getting auto and gated and stuff. And that's what it is. If your sales performance is good, you'll start getting ungated in a lot of brands. And then when you first, for your first resellers, the new resellers, you're going to be gated in a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of categories that you'll be ungated in that you can start selling. And that's what a lot of people have, a, re, new sellers have. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm gated in this. I'm gated in that. You're going to be gated in a lot of big brands, but categories, you're not going to be gated in. It's just you got to scan the product. Like I was talking about earlier, I clear shelves. I find a product, I clear it. It's done and over with. I'm not holding back. But as a new seller, you don't like what I think Karen's or some Sarah said or some uh, Nate and them are saying. You want to go five, pick five. There's that saying: go, don't go deep, go wide. Pick five of that product, send it in. If it sells, then you know what product you can sell, and you also got a replan for you, and you yeah. can go, keep going back to whatever store you're going to, and getting that product over and over and over. Then after you start building up and building up, then you can start clearing the shelf and have the inventory built in. That's what I say on the retail and all that stuff like that. You have to remember and also clearing the shelf costs money. No, oh, yes, it does. I'll tell you, it costs some money. But if you're like you were talking about and what you guys are saying, it depends how much you're paying for the product. Right. That's mm -hmm. it. If you're paying full price and clearing shelves, that costs money. If you buy it on clearance or use coupons. And stuff Just like that. Stuff. Then, you, then you can clear the shelf. You can clear shelves all day long. It, it all costs money because there's yeah. a lot of merchandise we're buying. It costs yeah. money. You, you ha there's an outlay. Jeremiah had a question I saw asking about whether beginners can do tactical arbitrage. I, I think Mikey took that, didn't you? Didn't Did you? Mike? I think Mikey took that already. Okay. Uh, yeah, the arbitrage, retail arbitrage. <laughs> Yeah. No, I thought he was asking about tactical arbitrage specifically. That's going to be Horace. Yeah, like we'll I said, come, me and we'll come back to that. Yeah. Um, real quick, I wanted to put that out there for any beginners that might be watching this. And this goes right into what Mikey was just talking about. Beginners are gated in a lot of uh, brands, but that doesn't mean that you need to spend the time, effort, energy, and money trying to get ungated right away. No. You guys are right. a big person that, that says you don't need to worry about that just yet. Uh, if you're interested, I just dropped a link to where part of a program I actually give ungated leads. So if you if you use that link, you can go watch the doodle video if that's something you're interested in. You probably will only need it for maybe a month or two. Uh, and it's very, very affordable. But the point is this. There are a lot of good deals out there for newbies that are gated in a lot of brands, a lot of categories. These leads are vetted. Plus, not only do you get a spreadsheet, you're gonna get that with every leads list that you subscribe to, but imagine getting coaching with each and every leads list. That way, you not only get a fish, you learn how to fish. Learn how I think, learn how I process, mm -hmm. and you will be just as good as me in no time. And so you'll be, and that, then, you'll, then you'll be as good as me. <laughs> Let's go back and unpack that. Somebody, was it Tim Tebow? Uh, sure for, there are so many ways that you can find our retail Do not do Amazon. thrift store. Do not do thrift store selling on Amazon because that'd be used items. They do have used items on Amazon though. Yes, they do, yeah, but a lot of, you want to really a lot of uh, customers. Would you want to buy a used GoPro? Uh, no, they, I don't. You, don't, yeah, Amazon, see, don't you want to sell? You, yeah, you want to sell. Now, yeah, thrift stores, uh, thrift store shopping is books. You're not gated in books. Resell, the new resellers, you're not gated in books, and thrift stores is a good place to find books. If that's what you solely want to do is thrift stores, then you can use other platforms like Macari eBay, yeah. eBay, Poshmark, Poshmark and, you and you can actually make some really good sales on there. Yes, you can. You can also make good money with used items. It just really depends on what it is. If you really right. want to, you know, get into a niche, like early on, 
used typewriters were my bread and butter. I mean, mm -hmm. used typewriters on Amazon, please, people, please believe, check out yes. how much yes. they cost on Amazon. You can buy them on Facebook Market and talk about a return on investment. But you know, that's not a scalable long-term strategy. Yes, typically. that's right. Kim. I mean, there's some items you can sell that's used from a thrift store on Amazon, but do you really want to sell used stuff the whole time? Probably if not. If they not find only. something that they can sell a lot, why not? It just yeah, depends why not? on but the person let's, let's, what you want to sell. Let's, let's say you find a VCR. You're not going to find that same brand of VCR all the time at a thrift store. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the problem. One timers, a lot of one timers. One yeah, and that one, yeah, that one timer. Yeah, you can buy it at a thrift store for ten bucks and turn around and sell it for fifty. That helps you on your sales performance too. You, and it you helps know, you build capital if you're yep. if you're trying to bootstrap your operation. I mean, if I could sell a typewriter for two hundred dollars. Um, and you bought it for 30. Yeah, you know how many widgets oh, yeah. I have to sell in order to get <laughs> right. the, you know, right. a typewriter I paid $25 for a soldier for 200. You know, Amazon's right. going to get you made a about a hundred of that. And you made about $150 off sure. of it. So then I can go and try to clear a shelf. A shelf yes, with bubble Aaron. gum or old Easter candy. Hey, you absolutely can clear a shelf with 150 dollars. Karen's getting it now. You can find the right product. Shelf. You can share anything that you want to. It uh, looks like you had a comment. You weren't sure if, if 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 you were allowed to share something. Go go right ahead with that. Uh, Brian, Mr. People says books and yep. news media. Yep has great return on investment, but it's a, but it's a grind. grind for sure. Yes, it is. A lot of work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of work, work in selling books because there, there's different apps you have to use. You can use a Amazon seller app when you're scanning and stuff, but you can't use like Scoutify that comes with inventory. There's well, it's some different one that you have. It's Scout something you have to use to scan. And then you can, you can get that little scanner, the finger scanner and line them up, line books up and start scanning it that way to find out what's profitable or not. Mm -hmm. Katie says uh, she lives in the UK and uses a forwarder in Florida. Obviously, if you're overseas and you want to sell in the US, you're going to have to do that. Uh, Jeremiah says a lot of people jump into TA and quit before it becomes worthwhile. If budget is no concern, do it. Otherwise, there are I answered that one already. Yeah. New sellers have I was going to answer that one too. You want to take it? Go ahead. Um, having a hard time uh, prepping their first shipment. Yes, it's hard. It just also depends on what service you're using on your shipping. If you're using this Amazon sellers and doing shipping that way, it's a lot harder. If you're using Inventory Lab, I haven't used that seller, what Sarah says she uses. I haven't seen that. If you use Inventory Lab, it is so easy. You just scan, put put the price that you paid for it. Turn around, and put how much you want to put for it. It tells you your ROI and everything like that. You just hit the shipment in, and Inventory Lab does it for you. And all you do is just take it in, take that product, stick it in a box, print the label, and send it to Amazon. It's simple. You know, something else on that. A lot of time, uh, we as resellers act in isolation a lot. We're kind of our own operation. But I tell you, I, I ended up meeting someone who isn't part of this group, but I ended up meeting someone uh, who was a little bit further down the road than than I was. And that person um, was and continues to be wonderful for me so that when I did my first shipment, I was an, uh, an eBay seller, but I wanted to be an Amazon seller. Um, she was kind enough to do to FaceTime me. Um, right. So she was on my iPad and I could see her and she could see me. And she was going right along with me all the steps that I was going through. So when I sort of messed up, because I was a nervous wreck when I was trying <laughs> to do my first shit. I mean, I was, I was just Freaking so... Out. I, I, I was just, 
you know so my point here is don't suffer alone in silence if you happen to know someone anyone who is already an, an amazon seller and they are uh, are already proficient at sending uh shipments in if you need somebody to hold your hand ask them to hold your hand to help you along and and you'll soon be on your way but there's no shame in getting someone more experienced to help you i I don't, I don't know that horse can do quite that much, but you know, he's always down for a quick call if you, or a quick text if you get stuck somewhere. My point is don't necessarily, uh -huh. you know, try to go it alone if you don't feel confident to do that. You know, one okay. suggestion like to tack on that is when you're in the store, one way for you to get product is scanning. Pay attention when you're in the store. You're going to see someone. Where's your phone? You might see someone with their phone. Like if you see me in the store, you may see me like this, scanning. Stop and ask that person. Excuse me. Are you a reseller, or do you sell on other platforms? Most of us will say yeah, and then you can start the conversation there. You know, I'm a new seller. I'm wondering if you can answer this question for me. Or would you mind mentoring me? Could you help me? Most people will help you. Some of them will be rude and say, no, I don't have time. Move on to the, you will. Once you start looking and when you're at the store, you'll start seeing more people scanning things. Once you see them scanning, you automatically know they're doing that for a reason. But you also got to watch too on resellers if they're on Amazon because they can steal your product too. I learned that one. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since you stole mine. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I do watch other people at stores. If I see anybody with a bunch of anything in their basket, I go look for that. I have oh, somebody. They may or may not be a reseller. Like, I don't know. Yeah, someone mentioned that today when I was, I did a little trip to Ollie's today, and someone asked me, I had three carts full say hey what are you going to do with all that and i said a reseller and he's like oh i'm a reseller too but he resells on ebay and i was like oh that's cool i do too and i told him what products that to look out for for ebay that's hot right now but he didn't ask me for amazon someone asked me on amazon i'm like hey i gotta go bye i gotta go that way but you know one there's thing too many have... resellers if you live in florida you already know if you live in florida there's there's too many resellers in florida there's too many resellers in california Probably Nate, where he lives, there's probably too many resellers down there too. It's just. But the big takeaway is find a mentor if you can. Right. Yes. Find right. find right. someone who um, my mentor is. She's just a marvelous person. I really would have given up. I I mean, it was before I found um, Horace, but initially I just would have given up because. I was scared to do the shipment. It works so much different than other platforms do. Um, and then Amazon kept sending me all of these emails about this thing and that thing and scaring me to death. Um, and so it's just really helpful to have somebody who's sort of been there, done that. Well, now you got two people there, Karen. You got yeah, me and you got Well, Ford. Mike, I know I can always call on you. That's all I'm saying. Like, a, <laughs> like a, the, on the whole inventory lab, is that I will make a video how to do a shipment and set up and stuff like that. I have, I've i been having a video list. I talked to Horace about it last night, like how we're going to collab on his thing and I'm going to collab with my thing. And Horace is all about, you know, tackle arbitrage and I'm all about RA. And But there's a lot of videos out there that doesn't explain how inventory lab really works how does it break down and all that you can watch videos on youtube it's like oh this is how you do a shipment through inventory lab but it does that a lot of them don't show you the steps and everything like that yeah. and, and i have stylistic issues we all learn in different ways some people yes. like to read information some right. people like um you know different types of we have a YouTubers. lot of Dash and instacart scanners uh, uh, horse is my favorite youtuber of all times but well, you know you'll be surprised when i come baby oh <laughs> gosh i can't keep up mikey i can't well that's what the uh, videos are because i'm the only one going in the store and just showing you what yeah. like, how fast i get in and get out of the store 
But we, the point we, we is, don't, don't get discouraged. Keep yeah, searching. Yeah, I'm saying, I, 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 you, you, you'll see how fast I'm in and out of the store. I'm not sitting there because I make my list. But there's also new products that I want to sell too. So I'll take the time to sit there and scan a whole aisle. Go up and down, up and down, up and down the aisle to scan to find new products. Because See, me as I'd rather, still, I'd rather, I'd rather stick a fork in my eye than do that. Yeah, as me, I'm still a new seller. I've been selling for almost five months, but I'm still a new seller. <laughs> we're all, we're all different. Right? Yeah, and it's everybody okay. that is your business platform is different. We talked about it before in our little private thing. Mine is just full blown, hundred percent. Let's go. Mike is in the building. That's how it's gonna be. And it's awesome. I'm just saying to the, you know, any newbies watching, just, just know there's as many ways to do this as there are I just, selves. I like, I like Judy's look, uh, her like comment, there's a lot of board like dashers. Everybody can find seniors. their own sort of <laughs> groove and way to do it and it, and it'll work. Make sure guys, uh, especially newbies that are interested in tactical arbitrage right on this channel. You can find the lightning courses right now. There are three. The end of this week, we're coming out with the fourth one. So if you want to learn the software and you want to be able to use it during your free trial and actually have it pay for itself, take those courses. They're about 10 minutes each. And the, the purpose is so that you can quickly start using your searches. The software isn't very intuitive. It's not very easy. But once you know what to do, we can get you set up. Uh, on that note, Mikey was talking about preparing shipments. He and I are going to work on some of those. But in the meantime, we do have two videos up on this channel that take you from prep to when the UPS guy comes, we smile, we wave. You get the whole experience. So take the time to watch those. They're a little bit on the lengthy side, but they were put together for your benefit. Karen, Karen Jones, you can FaceTime me. Anytime uh, I was telling the horse, I've been helping a lot of people this week. I've been, this group has pushed me as a better person and as a better reseller. And I've been on, uh, I'll tell you, I have, I'm on the Hustle Buddies Facebook group. I guess a lot of these resellers are on it. And I posted what I've uh, made in the past four and a half months and nobody was there to help them. And I sit there and I told them, if you have time after six o'clock when I get off work, I will FaceTime you. I'll vi uh, video Facebook video you. I will answer any questions you have as me as a new reseller. And then that's what I came up to the point that is I need to start my YouTube channel and go on. But yeah, Karen Jones, you can FaceTime me. You can message me. This is Mikey Resales is my YouTube channel. You can message me on there. I can. We can do a Zoom call or something like that. Any questions you got, I'll be glad to help you. If not, Horace can, you can contact Horace on telephone. You can send him a text. But if you need FaceTime, I'm down to do it all day long. Me and Nate's already had some FaceTime talk. He won't answer my phone calls now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for that, Mikey. For anybody that's interested in connecting with me, text the words working class hustle to the number on your screen and you can use that through me to get to Mikey, believe it or not. Yeah. I'll patch you through. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'll answer all your questions you want to answer. I mean, I take time from work. I do my lunch and answer people's questions. It was a lot of people were really surprised as me as, you know, selling for almost five months, how much knowledge I know and everything. And they're like, and they're, there's, wow, how I pulled, how much sales I've done in the past five months. Karen's face is still smiling. I see it. But... <laughs> <laughs> but it's I, I'm here to help and that's what it is and I'm if I help you can help me and that's how it is it's this is this is coming a family for YouTube our group that we got going on is you help us we help you we'll give the knowledge out and I've learned a lot from Karen too I've took some advice I've had and then that's what it is it's just we're here to help and we're here and I'm not like Horace says too we're not here to spin two thousand dollars for a course for you guys to learn the damn basis how to sell on amazon i have a word that i came up with i've been telling people if you can skip a rock you can sell on amazon that's okay. it <laughs> uh brian peoples reminds everyone uh to hit the like button yes so let's get up to the, how many people's in the chat let's do that that'll help build the algorithm for this video and then help it'll help the channel out too 
See, um, I got this down, baby. I'm getting this. One thing I want to go over that we didn't get to, we're going to wrap up here, but Elizabeth was saying, um, I think on our last call, we were talking about getting ready for Q4, and it's all about having supplies. I mentioned a, a site that I use for supplies. I can't type in here. If you're in, they have a program where you can get free shipping. You're talking about bulk items, and I think Elizabeth was saying we really should unpack that. So we're going to look to do that next week. Uh, I'm going to collab with the panelists so that we can come up with an agenda. If you guys want us to cover anything specific, make Forrest, sure. Can you type up in the chat thing right there what my uh, uh, channel name is? Mikey Resales. I can't do it on here. I don't know how to. I have to go to the, uh, YouTube and do that, I guess. Oh, yeah. on the, and the You could drop a comment. Do you know how to do yeah, that? Yeah, I can't drop a comment here because I'm a part of the live thing. Okay. What is it? It's Mikey Resells. It's my name. What is it? Why Mikey is that for, for the new people, Horace put his phone number on there. I can tell you he does contact you back. He really does. Remember, he has a full-time job. He will contact you, though. Um, I think when he, when my husband first sent a message, it was like within 24 hours, probably like in the middle of the night. We're West Coast. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta remember the time zone is Horace too. I, I get it confused sometimes. I called him one night and it was twelve o'clock his uh, twelve one o'clock his time and yeah, and I hung up. We bye. Yeah, Let's get it over with. Off, but he definitely will contact you back. Mikey, is it is it MikeyResales.com or is it your channel is Mikey Resales? My channel is Mikey Resales. I'm trying to pull it up. Oh, where's it at? I bet you they just search on YouTube for Mikey Resales. It'll pull up. There's no videos or nothing on it, but here, I'll let's see if I can do it this way. I'll send it in here. I just stuck it up there in the comments. Did I get it right? Yeah, that's right. I sent you the link to it. I think it'll go to it. Well, we, Jim, Jim, there you go. Thank oh, you. Uh, thank you, Poppy. <laughs> you got it. Go, Pappy, go. Go, Pappy, go. You got it right Jim, there. All the videos that you see me, this is the guy that put it together. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. This would not be happening. We, I wouldn't know you if it wasn't for that guy. Because I appreciate him. I, I appreciate him. Okay. <laughs> Great job, Jim. Indeed. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, hang on. Can I research you through what's I don't have a WhatsApp app. I don't know what that is. Um, I have oh, an Instagram that you guys can contact me through. I would really recommend anyone watching contact contact Taurus. Like, I think it would be a fantastic connector of yes, yes he'll, he'll get you contact with me real fast. So, you know. But you can also, uh, we can talk through YouTube, and I can give you my invite you into a Zoom because I don't, I don't do a lot of the WhatsApp apps and stuff like that. There's a lot of distributors that ask for the WhatsApp app, and I do not trust that. That seems a scam thing. If you can't through an email or on the telephone call, new sellers watch out for that because it's a scam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's me personally. I've, I've done it. Yeah. It's not good. You just lose money real fast. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we'll do we can do that conversation in a private thing. What else uh, are we yeah, doing? I'm, what else I'm are not we really doing? happy with that? Um one. I'm gonna leave it open for one more question in case there's somebody out here. We still got twenty-five viewers out here. So wow. if if there's anybody that had a question, we'll give it a minute and then we're gonna wrap up because because I gotta do my prep work. I got a whole shipment that has to go out because I need to maintain my momentum. That's so, right. And I got to get mine going too. I'm kind of full this week. Uh, I, I don't use WhatsApp. So you can just, um, if we're not connected already, you can you can get connected with, with that number that's dedicated for you guys. Yeah, if you guys want to connect with me, how do I find you, Mike? Uh, uh, go pappy go put my youtube link up there um if i can put my instagram name on there too if you have instagram you can find me that and we can do a call that way too 
Uh, I'm still in the process of doing all this technology stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 getting there i mean i got a gopro finally i found you know i put this out there i found this on clearance for 169 dollars at walmart that was a that was a score for me so that's what really up my juju to start this but all right guys i think we took care of everybody for now so we're gonna end i'm gonna ask the panelists to hang around for a little bit but we're gonna go ahead and yeah, I'll hang around. I'm down. I'm uh, I'm still waiting on Nick to call me back. 